The Kuiperowitz Formation, located in southern Utah's Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, dates back to the late Cretaceous period, around 76 to 74 million years ago. It consists of sandstone, mudstone, and coal. The climate at the time was warm and humid, with seasonal rainfall contributing to lush, forested environments. This setting provided ideal conditions for a diverse range of plant and animal life. This formation is rich in fossils, including dinosaurs like hadrosaurs, ceratopsians and theropods, alongside turtles and crocodilians. Fossilized plants, such as ferns and conifers, indicate a lush ecosystem that supported diverse life. As the formation included wetlands, many semi-aquatic reptiles have been found, notably turtles from the Benedi family, an extinct family of turtles that left no descendants. Species of the genus Atticus had flattened and smoothly contoured shells with horny sculptured plates. These large freshwater turtles had an omnivorous diet. Several species appear to have been discovered without precise identification, and their size varies greatly from one individual to another. Amongst Nanciunculeids, Basilemys is considered to be most similar to tortoises. Many paleontologists have described the behaviors of Basilemys to likely be comparable to that of tortoises, due to living in terrestrial habitats and consuming tough plants. It is easily distinguishable from other fossil turtles due to how thick its shell is, the intricate sculpture of rows of triangular tubercles separated by pits, and its reduced inframarginal scales. The fossil record is abundant with material from the shell, but cranial and cervical material is quite rare for basilemys. Arvanachles, like typical banids, was an aquatic or semi-aquatic animal, bearing typical characteristics of aquatic turtles, including a hydrodynamic shell and broad, paddle-like limbs. Banids are the most diverse type of turtle in the North Hemisphere during the late Cretaceous, being extremely specious and probably occupying a variety of ecological niches. Its nostrils, superficially reminiscent of a pig's snout, are highly atypical for banids and turtles in general, and might have played a role in its lifestyle. The fossil found in the Kuiperowitz formation may not be Bernisarcia proper, but a close cousin. It would extend the family's time range to the Campanian. It resembled modern species in many respects, and was probably semi-aquatic. Brachychamps's dentition was heterodont, with conical teeth at the front and bulbous teeth at the back. It has been regarded as a specialist hunter of turtles, based on its rostral shape, massive dentary, and dental morphology, though this has been challenged over the years. A more generalist diet of small invertebrates and vertebrates has also been proposed. With a skull about 40 centimeters long, Lediosuchus would be expected to have been a mid-sized alligator and predator of small reptiles and quite possibly small dinosaurs too. It is one of the basalmost members of the superfamily Alligatoroidea. Deinosuchus could grow up to 10 meters long, making it one of the largest crocodilians ever. It had a powerful bite force, estimated to be around 18,000 pounds, potentially stronger than that of Tyrannosaurus rex. Though it primarily fed on large aquatic prey, evidence suggests it could also prey on dinosaurs. Fossilized dinosaur bones with Deinosuchus bite marks have been found, indicating that it may have ambushed terrestrial animals at the water's edge. Studies of its growth rings show that these reptiles could live for over 50 years, with some reaching old age and growing to their massive size over time. While it looked similar to modern crocodiles, it had some unique traits, such as unusually thick, robust teeth, more suited for crushing than slicing, which may have helped it hunt large prey, 
including armored dinosaurs. Echinocephalus is known for its distinctive skull armor, featuring intricate bony knobs and ridges. Unlike other ankylosaurs, it had more pronounced spikes and cranial ornamentation, suggesting species-specific defense adaptations or possibly even display features. It shows closer affinities to Asian ankylosaurs like Cycania and Tarkia than to North American ankylosaurs. This suggests that ankylosaurs may have dispersed between Asia and North America via land bridges, showing complex biogeographical connections during the late Cretaceous. Its low-slung body and strong beak were ideal for feeding on ferns and low-lying vegetation. Its fossil is one of the most complete ankylosaur skeletons found in North America. The name Anodontosaurus means toothless lizard, referring to its toothless, keratin-covered beak. Despite lacking teeth in the front of its mouth, it had powerful, leaf-shaped teeth in its cheeks, ideal for grinding tough, fibrous plant material. It had a massive tail club, made of fused vertebrae and bone, which it likely used to defend against large predators like Pteridophonius. It thrived in a lush, temperate environment with rivers, forests, and abundant vegetation. It coexisted with large herbivores like hadrosaurs and ceratopsians, and its diet consisted mainly of low-lying plants such as ferns and cycads. For many years, Anodontosaurus fossils were confused with those of Euoplocephalus due to their similarities. It wasn't until more detailed studies of the skull and armor were conducted that it was identified as a distinct species in 1929. Nasutoceratops would have measured around 4.8 meters long, and had very long horns, curving out to the sides and then twisting forwards into a shape that convergently resembles those of modern cattle. It appears to have been part of a unique side branch of the early centrosaurs known as the Nasutoceratopsini, which had long brow horns, small nose horns, and only modestly decorated frills compared to their other relatives. Its snout was short and deep, with an unusually huge nasal cavity, even for a ceratopsid, and shows evidence of pneumatic air sacs. Cosmoceratops had one of the most ornate skulls of any known dinosaur. It's known from a partial skeleton and an almost complete skull and is estimated to have measured around 5 meters long. Its frill was relatively short and wide for a chasmosaur, topped with a fringe of eight long folded over spikes and a pair of sideways curving hooks. Its brow horns curved sideways, and its nose horn was thin and flattened into a blade-like shape. Overall, it had a total of 15 large horns and spikes, 10 big frill spikes, two brow horns, a nose horn, and two cheek spikes, along with 16 additional scallops along the sides of its frill. Eutaceratops was a large-sized, robustly built, ground-dwelling, quadrupedal herbivore that could grow up to an estimated 5 meters long. The plateau where dinosaurs lived was an ancient floodplain dominated by large channels and abundant wetland peat swamps, ponds and lakes, and was bordered by highlands. The climate was wet and humid, and supported an abundant and diverse range of organisms. Eutaceratops is known from six specimens, including two partial skulls, which when taken together preserve about 96% of the skull and 70% of the postcranial skeleton. Gryposaurus is the most common hadrosaur found in this formation. As a hadrosaurid, Gryposaurus would have been a bipedal quadrupedal herbivore, eating a variety of plants. Its skull had special joints that permitted a grinding motion analogous to chewing, and its teeth were continually replacing and packed into dental batteries that contained hundreds of teeth, only a relative handful of which were in use at any time. Plant material would have been cropped by its broad beak, and held in the jaws by a cheek-like organ. Its feeding range would have extended from the ground to about 4 meters above.
The most striking feature of Parasaurolophus cerdicristus is its smaller, more curved cranial crest compared to other species in the genus. Parasaurolophus cerdicristus is known from only a few fossil specimens, making it one of the rarer species of Parasaurolophus. Some paleontologists speculate that the shorter, its curved crest might indicate it was either a younger individual or a female, rather than a distinct species. However, more recent research suggests that these differences could be species-specific, rather than related to age or sex. The crest, hollow and connected to the nasal passages, may have served as a resonating chamber for vocalization. Due to its smaller size and different curvature, Parasaurolophus cerdicristus might have produced unique calls compared to other Parasaurolophus species, possibly used for communication or mating. Teratophonius was the largest carnivore in the area, as well as the most common tyrannosaur in the southern United States. A bone bed of fossils from the Rainbows and Unicorns Quarry in southern Utah's Kuiperowitz Formation described in 2021 attributed to Teratophonia suggests that the genus may have been a social pack hunter. The fossils, consisting of four or possibly five animals ranging from 4 to 22 years of age, suggest a mass mortality event, possibly caused by flooding or less likely by cyanobacterial toxicosis, fire or drought. The fact that all of the animals preserved died within a short time period further strengthens the argument for gregarious behavior in tyrannosaurids. Talos is a trudontid, a group of small, bird-like, gracile manoraptorans. All trudontids have many unique features of the skull, such as closely spaced teeth in the lower jaw, and large numbers of teeth. Trudentids have sickle claws and raptorial hands, and some of the highest non-avian encephalization quotients, meaning they were behaviorally advanced and had keen senses. Talos is approximately 2 meters in length, and its weight has been estimated at 38 kilograms. Sauronithalists likely had an exceptional sense of smell due to its enlarged olfactory bulb. Its premaxillary teeth, like those of Velociraptor, may have been specialized for preening feathers. Studies suggest Sauronithalists had a puncture and pull feeding method, preferring larger prey than trudentids, and possibly included bone in its diet, similar to Tyrannosaurids. A tooth embedded in a pterosaur wing bone suggests it might have scavenged on large animals. Dromaeosaurus differs from most of its relatives in having a short, massive skull, a deep mandible and robust teeth. The teeth tend to be more heavily worn than those of its relative Sauronithalists, suggesting that its jaws were used for crushing and tearing rather than simply slicing through flesh. Therian and colleagues estimated that Dromaeosaurus had a bite nearly three times as powerful as that of Velociraptor and suggested it relied more on its jaws than on the sickle claw to kill its prey. As the specific name indicates, Hagraphus giganteus was a particularly large oviraptorosaur, estimated by the describers to have been approximately 3 meters long, which makes it one of the largest members of the clade oviraptorosauria. It is known only from an incomplete but articulated left manus and the distal portion of the left radius. Mirarse was a large turkey-sized bird. Skeletal morphology indicates that at the time of death, the individual was adult. The humerus of the bird is short and strong. The left ulna was preserved as a mineral cast of the internal cavity with several small fragments of fossilized bone surface. Two folded spots preserved on the posterior edge of the bone body are interpreted as quill knobs. These elongated folds are located along the length of the bone. Despite the fact that bone fragments do not allow measuring the size of each tubercle, determining the distance between them or estimating the number of secondary feathers, their very presence on the fossil is a very significant fact, 
as this is the first time the structure has been found in enantronathenes.